Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, we're getting ready to start the epoxy process. First thing we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and bring our shovel outside. Go ahead and mount it into the ground so it's uh, more or less uh, perpendicular. Then we've got, I'm using Loctite Epoxy Gel. Uh, works really good. The gel is critical because it gives you the consistency that you need. So I've got a new set here. We're going to go ahead and cut the tips. off of the epoxy and then what we're going to see here is that this has a, the epoxy and it has a hardener and so when you squeeze this out it's important that you get the exact same amount or, or almost the exact same amount of each and then we're going to mix that up then we're going to have to move quick because this stuff will start to harden so we want to move rapidly in this part of the process okay so we're going to move through this part of the process pretty rapidly we've got our epoxy we're going to go ahead and squeeze out a bit and again, we're aiming for the same amount of the clear and the white. Pull it back a little bit in order to stop the flow. What we're going to do here is we've got a, uh, a popsicle stick. We're going to start to stir it together, vigorously get a really strong mix. You can see that I've gone ahead and I've got some pieces of tape ready to go so that we can move quickly once we get this mixed to where we want it. It is important that you mix it thoroughly in order for that hardener to get in there correctly. Okay, that's probably good enough. So here we see we've got the end of the, uh, the piece of our flagpole. All right, I forgot to mention I want to go ahead and rough this piece up just a little bit uh, in order for the epoxy to bite a little bit better. So that's good enough. We've got the epoxy. We're going to go ahead and smear that onto the uh, flagpole. And the gel is uh, extra thick, which, which is quite a help in this process. Uh, especially if your hole is a little bit larger than it needs to be. We're going to go ahead and mount that into the shovel handle okay we're going to go ahead and wipe off the excess just to keep it looking nice doesn't have to be perfect but uh, that excess isn't serving any real purpose next we're going to take our guides you can see that i've put a little bit of tape and, and again just by luck when you go ahead and put tape around here we're going to see that uh, that helps quite a bit in terms of lining up the handle and the pole. So what we see there is that the tape keeps it from uh, bending too much. It, it really holds the position well for us. I like to use two of these so we're going to go ahead and mount a second one on the other side and again we're going to tape them down Then the last thing we're going to do is tape these top pieces together. Check it to make sure it's nice and straight. Uh, it should be nice and straight. And we're going to leave it alone for about uh, 24 hours. The epoxy sets up pretty quickly, but there's no reason to mess with it. Let's just leave this out here overnight let it dry. We're going to find out that this flagpole is mounted uh, perfectly straight into the shovel handle and you're going to be really happy with the result. Uh, we are letting our shovel dry. We're going to give that 24 hours or so to let that epoxy cure perfectly. Then what we're going to have is essentially this, uh, which is a shovel. I've put a piece of plastic around here to protect the parts that I don't want to have painted. And I'm starting to find that you know painting these is, is the easiest process. We can also wood burn them pretty tedious. Uh, very hard to burn this wood that's so hard. So what I'm going to recommend for you is painting it. What I've done was I sanded it down, made it nice and smooth so I had a good surface to work with. Uh, the, the design I like best is uh, white letters and black otherwise. So the letters are going to be white. Uh, the rest of the shovel is going to be black. 
So what we're going to want to do is go ahead and paint our letter color all over the uh, shovel handle. So go ahead and I've taken this one, I've uh, protected the, the metal part, taped it off, I've spray painted, and I'm going to use this white in order for my letters. You're going to see how that works in just a minute. Okay, here's another shovel that I'm working on. This one's going to be a little bit different. I'm actually going to use black letters. So you can see that I have spray painted the shovel black and I'm using these stickers. You can get them at the store. They're, I've, since I'm using a, a black handle, I've got white stickers to make them show up good. For uh, uh, white letters, go ahead and get black stickers so they show up good. And what we're going to do is go ahead and put our lettering on the shovel handle exactly as we want it uh, with these stickers and we're going to spray paint over that let it dry 24 hours that's crucial and then we're going to pull these stickers off and we're going to be left with the letters that we want so you can see here I'm doing another copperhead shovel so I've got all the letters on except the D I'm going to go ahead and find a D and fix that onto the shovel Uh, putting on the letters can be a tedious process. The best way to do it is actually to lay it out on a table. Uh, look down the shovel this way, start laying the letters dead center, then go ahead and put yourself some blue tape in order to make sure you've got them all lined up. So I've got that to say about what I want it to say. Uh, I'm going to then make sure I've got the stickers on tightly and we're going to hit it with spray paint. So this design's a little bit different. I'm going to paint this all copper. Again, I really recommend that black and white approach. They look great. Uh, we've got some real good results out of that. But for sake of demonstration, The other option I want to talk about is, uh, again, this is a copperhead shovel. Uh, this is a wood burning approach. It's, it's a bit tedious. Uh, if you want to try it, wood burners are, are pretty cheap. Go to Harbor Freight, they're about $6. Uh, getting the letters on is, is a bit of a challenge. I've used some, uh, put on some sticker letters and then burned through the sticker letter. Uh, comes out pretty good. It is a lot more tedious and I, I frankly think the painted look is a little bit nicer. Uh, but if you want to try that, don't hesitate. Okay, once you have your shovel flag uh, exactly how you want it, we want to protect it to make sure the paint doesn't chip or uh, the wood get too dirty or, or nasty looking. There's two products you want to use, and it depends on whether you painted it or whether you uh, did wood burning. If you wood burn, you're going to want to use polyurethane. Uh, even clear polyurethane has a tint to it, so if you go ahead and put it on the uh, wood burn shovel handle, it'll, it'll lighten it up or darken it up just a little bit look nice, it'll give it a great uh, protection, it's the exact same thing you put on your hardwood floors. It does tint. So if you're doing a, uh, a different style of shovel, especially if you use white lettering, you're going to want to use instead shellac. Shellac actually is clear, it will not change the color of your lettering, it won't turn your white letters yellow. Uh, it, it works fine, it's going to give you some protection from the rain and from the elements. Uh, so depending on how you finish it, if you paint, you're going to want to use shellac. If you use wood burning, you're going to want to use a polyurethane. Okay, now let's take a look at what the end result's going to be. This is again the uh, uh, current copperhead shovel. We're going to go ahead and plant that into the ground. Two feet always works best. And you're going to see that we can mount this flag and it fits just perfectly. It makes a nice straight presentation, looks great for your workout. So I encourage everyone to give this a try. Uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to call me. I'll be glad to walk you through it. If you're in the metro region, I'm about a mile from Home Depot. I'll be glad to help. Thanks.